Hello and welcome to Formula to Remove Duplicates. My name is Jeff, I'm glad you're here. Let's just jump right in. I was recently asked the following question. Is there a formula to remove duplicate rows based on duplicates from a specific column? And I'm gonna answer that question in this video. Let's get started with exercise one. In this first exercise, let's assume we have a single column. In the next exercise, we'll go to multiple columns. But for now, our simple goal is to simply remove the duplicate values. This is actually pretty easy. What we can do is just go to data, remove duplicates. And here there's only one column of data, so we only get one choice. And since our data has headers, I'll check this box. Then we can click OK. Excel gives me a confirmation and I click OK. And the result is a list that's been deduped. But the question really was, how do I write a formula to do this? So depending on what you're working on, you may not want to use the remove duplicates command. You may want to write a formula. So let's undo. If I wanted to write a formula, what I would do is go equals unique and then I would point it to these values close function and enter and that's a formula that returns a unique list of the values in that range and that's the simple case we have a single column let's go to the next exercise exercise two anytime we have multiple columns in a range and we're removing duplicates whether we're using the remove duplicates command, a formula or other tools we have to think about what we want with the other columns in other words if I wanted to remove the duplicate rows Based on the item column, the question is, what do we do with the other columns? In other words, if we don't care about what happens to the other columns, or if we just want to retain the first one in the list, we can use the remove duplicates command. Here's how that works. Data, remove duplicates. By default, all three columns must be duplicated for the row to be considered a duplicate. And that's not what the question was. The question was based on a single column. So what we want to do is just update these checkboxes so that the column we want analyzed is checked. What this is saying is only look at the item column when you're determining which rows are duplicates. What happens with the other values? It's just going to keep the first one it encounters. For example, the first AB101 is 512, the first CG231 is 564. Let's click OK. We get the notification, we click OK. As you can see, we have 512 and 564. So this means we're not really worried about the other columns, just keep the first one in the list and we're good to go. So depending on what you're working on, that could be all you need. But what if we needed to be more specific about the other columns? For example, do we wanna sum the other columns? Do we wanna create a list of all the values in the other columns? Do we just wanna keep the biggest or max value? And you get the idea. So to handle that, we'll use a formula in the next exercise, exercise three. So to create the unique list of the item column, we'll once again use the unique function, equals unique. And we point it to our column, close the function and enter. And by the way, if we wanted to force those into a sorted order, we could simply wrap the sort function around the unique function and hit enter. Either way is fine. Now for the amount column, what do we wanna do? Do we wanna sum all the matching rows? Do we want to find the max value? Do we want to take the first or the last? Well, let's start with taking the sum. For that, we're going to use the sum ifs function. The first argument is the column of numbers to add. That's our amount column, comma. Next, we define the condition. We only want to include those rows where the item column value, comma, is equal to our item. Close the function and enter. And now we can simply fill this down. And now we've created a unique list based on the item column and we've summed the amount column. But what if instead we wanted to return the max value? Well, in that case, we'll use max ifs instead. We wanna find the max value of this column, comma. We only wanna include those rows where the item column is equal to our item. Close function and enter. And we can just fill this down. Likewise, if we wanted to find the minimum value, we would use the min ifs function. What if we wanted to return the first match? Well, for that, we could use the xlookup function equals xlookup. We want to go find this comma in here comma. We want to return the value from here. Close function and enter. And now we can fill this down. Likewise, if we wanted to get the last matching value, we could use xlookup, but this time use the search mode argument and say search last to first, enter. And then we can just fill this down. So as you can see, anytime we're removing duplicates from a range that has multiple columns, we need to think about what we want to have happen to those other columns. I'm once again gonna sum the values in the amount column. I wanna add up this column of numbers, 
comma, I only want to include those rows where the item number is equal to our item, close function and enter, and now we can fill this down. Now let's look at the invoice column. Here, we don't want to find the min or max or sum, that doesn't make sense. What if instead we wanted to create a comma separated list of all the matching invoice numbers? Well, for that, we can use filter and array to text. Here's how that works. Let's start with the filter function. We want to return the values from here, comma, and we only want to include those rows where the item number is equal to our item. Close the function and enter. And as we can see, this returns three invoice numbers for AB101. If I look at AB101, there's 1001, 1004, and 1007. And that's what the filter function returned. We want to turn this into a comma separated list. So we'll simply wrap the array to text function around the filter function. Close function and enter. And now we can just fill this down. And that's how we can remove duplicate values from a range that has multiple columns. We use the remove duplicates command, and then we use some formulas. Hopefully this has been helpful. Thanks for joining me. Have a great day. Hey, Excel user. If you ever need to create summary reports, check out my pivot table for beginners video. It starts at the beginning and shows how to store the data transactions in a table, and then how to summarize those transactions with a pivot table report. I hope it helps unlock the incredible power of pivot tables. This video is a production of Excel University.